Now, here's the point. I had absolutely no idea what foreign exchange actually did, but it sounded good. It was a bit like, you know, the foreign service, MI5, MI6, ASIO, whatever it was. It had a certain glamorous ring to it. The guy looked at me, smiled, and said, well, that can be arranged. And I sort of left with this little bit of optimism floating around in my head that this could actually be maybe something that could develop. A couple of weeks later, I found myself in a branch at Newport, and then a week later, I was transferred to Avalon, a local suburb, right across the beach. And like this was like, OK, I've got a job, I'm getting paid, I've got great access to surf, and it's not far from home. Cool. What I didn't bank on was that in a very short period of time, I hated the job with a passion. But there was the promise of foreign exchange. And I waited and I waited, but there was no call about foreign exchange. So fast forward to a year and a half, and I'm fed up. And one morning, a friend of mine rings me and says, let's go for a surf on the south side, but I need to go to uni first for a compulsory introductory two-hour lecture on psychology. And, uh, you know, and after that, we'll go for a surf. Now, you know, by this stage, I was needing a serious mental health day. And I, although I hesitated at first because I didn't like just playing hooky, um, I ended up going, okay, I'm in. So as we made our way across campus, having arrived at the university, I sort of got sucked into a bit of the buzz around the place. You know, there was lots of young people, you know, going here, there, everywhere, sitting on the lawns, lots of girls. Um, There was a band playing or rehearsing uh, in the corner. It was sort of like a little bit of a, you know, a couple of guitars and someone playing bongos. It was the 70s. Uh, and so, you know, it was cool. We got into the lecture hall and uh, within minutes of the lecture starting, my mate was asleep. However, on the other hand, I was captured by the environment and the topic. I suddenly knew what I wanted to do. And herein lies the problem. I didn't have an HSC. I didn't have the certificate that would get me into university with the right marks and the other problem was I was too young to be a mature age student which at the time was 26 and to me at 19 and a bit it seemed decades away not a couple of years so what to do well after a few phone calls because I wasn't going to be put off I found that I had one option that would get me what I wanted. I had to redo two years of schooling in one year. Now, it was a really, it was probably in some ways the most difficult academic year that I ever had because it really meant working hard. But I had a fire in my belly and I needed that to get through. Now, when I got the results, I was over the moon. I had hit my goal. Now, to round off the story, I've never looked back. It's been over four decades, and I'm as passionate about my work now as I ever was, and possibly more so, because I've expanded what I do. I'm no longer simply... Oh, that sounds bad. I'm not just working with people in counselling and therapy. I'm actually writing programs. I've written books. Uh, I've you know produced uh, a documentary, an entree film for a documentary. I'm now writing a script, and you know it, it, it's just a very fulfilling and 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 exciting and challenging space that I've created for myself as a result of that one shift, that one point where I did something that was out of the ordinary. I took a sickie. The surfing was a no-brainer. I would have gone for a surf anyway at lunchtime across the road. But I decided to go with my mate. And it was the thing that turned a surf trip into a life trip. Now, 
again, we all have turning points. This happened to be the one that I cherish in a way the most. But I could give you a dozen just in that story. There are a number of turning points. And what I want to encourage all you listeners out there to do is to reflect on what turning points you've encountered and what you chose to do. Because one of the speakers raised a really important point at at this juncture. She talked about, you know, for a turning point, it needs to be an end and then a beginning, but there's something in between. And it's the question that always intrigues me, is what is it that we do with the in-between? Or is it simply just another continuum? Where do we head? What is it that we draw on to make those decisions about which way to go? Now, I know from my own life experience that intuition weighs in heavily at this point. Uh, I've had too many experiences where I've ignored my intuition and I've regretted it later. So... I'm going to leave you with a challenge. I'm going to ask you to check in with yourself about the turning points. Because in the next podcast, I want to talk about community turning points. I want to talk about that idea of social change. How is it that we can identify critical turning points and critical pathways that stem from that? Where is it that we are going and what direction, what values, what moralities do we need to work with in order to leave a legacy that leaves this planet better off than when we came into it? And at the moment, there are some really serious challenges going on in that space. So I hope you've enjoyed my little story. Um, As I said, uh, you know, if you're interested in Karen's work, please go to agingfearlessly.com. You know, uh, I believe that there's recordings of the night, so if you're interested in that. uh, But I just thought I'd give my audience, my subscribers, my listeners, you know, the story that I wrote. Because when I speak, I often speak off script, so it's a little different. See, it's still the same theme, still the same, you know, broad brush approach, but just that little bit different, a little bit more personalised. So until next time, uh, take care of yourself, embrace change, and see what happens. Till later. It's me signing off. Thank you for listening to Inspire Change with Gunter. Gunter Swoboda does individual and group coaching for men looking to grow. For more information on this and the global Making Good Men Great movement, check out goodmengreat.com to get into contact. If you have a topic for the show or would like to be a guest on the air, please email producers at miranda at nortainment.com. That's Miranda, M-I-R-A-N-D-A, at Noirtainment, N-O-I-R-T-A-I-N-M-E-N-T dot com. Thank you and always keep inspiring change.